it's Miss Caitlin from the Bradley Public Library and I am here for tonight's PJ Storytime. My first book is called Sam and Eva. Sam had just begun to draw when Eva arrived. I like your pony, Eva said. It's a velociraptor, said Sam. Eva suggested a collaboration. Sam declined. Who said you could add a cat? Asked Sam. It's not a cat, Eva said. It's a marmot. Sam's velociraptor was hungry. Luckily, Eva's marmot had a friend. So did Sam's velociraptor. Marmot was actually a superhero in disguise. Velociraptor could shoot lightning out of his eyes. Suddenly a giant piano fell from the sky and squashed Marmot and her friend. Suddenly a giant piano fell from the sky and squashed Marmot and her friend. Nah. Suddenly confetti fell from the sky and tickled Marmot and her friend. Marmot liked the confetti until it started exploding. I don't like this story anymore, said Eva. Sam kept drawing, but it wasn't the same. I think it's time to start a new story, said Eva. Draw fast, said Sam. Uh-oh, look at they're escaping through the door they drew. I like your unicorn, said Sam. It's a triceratops, said Eva. The end. Sometimes sharing is really hard, but it's always the right thing to do. Our next book is called, There's a Dragon in My Closet. There's a dragon in my closet. There's a dragon, I swear. I run to tell my mom and dad, they don't believe he's there. He's a kind and gentle dragon, that's what I know for sure. One day when I was sick in bed, he left his own special cure. While I slept, he quietly crept, leaving candy and a letter. He's such a con, it was signed mom, so I wouldn't know any better. Another day, I went out to play, forgetting to make my bed. I came home expecting a mess, but found a clean room instead. Just last week, I lost a tooth, and I don't have to be a scholar to know that it was that old dragon who left me that crisp new dollar. He's mischievous, a little naughty. Of this, I have the proof. He plays in the mud in my tennis shoes. That dragon, he's such a goof. Once while I was brushing my teeth, I saw him peeking through the door. He was dancing under a sheet, a sight that made me roar. Panicked, my mom rushed up the stairs to see what was the matter. At first, she thought I must have rabies. My mouth was foaming with toothpaste lather. It's that silly dragon, I giggled and gagged. He'll do anything for a laugh. Mommy just shook her head and sighed and said, hurry up and take your bath. He chased me around the living room once and we knocked down a flower pot. I tried to explain to mom and dad, you think they believe me? Not. Then there was the cookie incident. I swear I only wanted one, but that greedy dragon ate the entire jar and mommy, well, she was done. We'll get to the bottom of this, she said. I mean it once and for all. She headed toward my bedroom, rushing swiftly down the hall. She was a mom on a mission. She seemed almost in a rage. Excitement is bad for dragons, not to mention a person her age. She flung open my closet door, looking quite frantic, I recall, when out from all the clutter bounced a lone red rubber ball. See, I told you, Mom, I quickly said. 
The dragon wants to play catch. The ball was followed by a shoe, some toys, and my pants with the big blue patch. As she parted my clothes hanging on the bar, I felt myself get weak and pale. Right there was a boot on top of my bat and on my shoe tree, a belt for a tail. This closet would give me bad dreams too of monsters and goblins I'd dread. You just imagine that dragon son, he only exists in your head. That was a setup, a decoy for sure, planted by the dragon for my mother. I have learned one great big lesson if I have learned no other. I'll never tell on the dragon. He remains my secret friend. Honoring that unspoken code, he's with me through thick and thin. Sometimes the night can play tricks on us and we think we see things, but they're not really there. My last book for tonight is called The Midnight Library. Once there was a library that opened only at night. A little librarian worked there with her three assistant owls. Every night, animals came to the library from all over the town and the little librarian and her three assistant owls helped each and every one find a perfect book. The library was always busy, but it was also a peaceful and quiet place until one night when, bang, crash, toot, a band of squirrels began to play music. Shh, said the little librarian, please be quiet in the reading room. We're sorry, said the squirrels, but we're trying to find a good song for our next concert. And then follow me, said the little librarian, and she showed the squirrels to the activity room. Silence settled upon the library once more while the band played their instruments as loud as they liked. Later that night, the little librarian was busy putting books away when suddenly it started to rain. Oh dear, said the little librarian, there must be a hole in the roof but sitting on top of a bookshelf, she found a wolf and she was crying. So much her tears fell like rain. What's the matter, Miss Wolf? Asked the little librarian. Something very sad happened in my story and I can't read it anymore, replied the wolf. Please don't cry, said the little librarian and she took Miss Wolf to the storytelling corner. They read the book together until gradually the wolf began to smile. The librarian and her assistants knew the story had a very happy ending. Ding, ding, the bell rang out as the sun came up. It was time for everyone to go home. One by one, the animals left the midnight library, all except one new visitor, a tortoise reading slowly in a corner, and he would not move. I must stay until I finish reading this book, said the tortoise. I only have 500 pages left. Let us make you a library card, said the little librarian. Then you can borrow this book and take it home with you. How wonderful, said the tortoise, and how lucky I am. Goodbye, Mr. Tortoise. Have a good day. The three owls and the little librarian gave the empty library a good dust and a sweep. Then, finally, it was time to find one last book. A very special book. A book of bedtime stories for the three sleepy owls. Sleep tight. All right, friends. All I have left is our goodnight poem, so if you're ready, we'll get started. Hush, hush. Little fish, we are here to make a wish. We close our eyes and then we start to make a wish with all our hearts. Good night, friends. Sweet dreams. <laughs>